Hey, I'm Dan. And I'm Swampy. We're the co-creators of Phineas and Ferb. A show that you're probably watching right now. Hopefully. There's a lot more representation of the under 30 crowd, I've noticed. Isn't that true? <laughs> so. We have all the money. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and all the credit. And the wisdom. Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so they're just going to be talking in cave talk? Yeah, and I think Doofenshmirtz is just going to grunt. Well, how are people going to know what's going on? Well, periodically, we'll just cut to you and me explaining it just like this in this sort of photo animation. Well, why don't we just uh, film it, live action? Nah, it's not in the budget. We get letters from kids all over the world asking us questions about the show. Well, that's, that we... that's not actually true. We don't get a lot of actual physical written on paper letters. What we get no, is a lot no, of emails, digital, true. electronic. Yeah. Jeremy works at A, Mr. Slushy Dog, B, Mr. Slushy Burger, C, Mr. Slushy Sandwich, or D, Mr. Slushy Church. I'll give you a hint. The answer has Mr. Slushy in it. Good hint. Yes. So what's it like working on a new show after doing Phineas for so long? The Ornithorhynchons were a platypus worshipping society. Why is his arm in a sling? That's what bothers you about this? Um, you can. Are you mentally stable? There's a platypus controlling me. He's underneath the table. Klimbaloon is the old-timey bathing suit who lives in the Himalayas. We haven't seen any children that are named Klimbaloon in honor of the show. Somebody better get on that right away. Phineas and Ferb, yeah, we're animated. I left the party at which I was having a great time last night because I realized, oh, I have to do interviews and a performance tomorrow. I think I'm going to lose my voice talking over this music. And I just like, but my daughter was there socializing with all of the high school, the musical, the musical, the series, like character, you know, like all, all the actors. And I was like, well, I'm not going to take her away from that she's having a great time so i just went out and hung out in the lobby and checked my email and stuff like that like a responsible adult finish the quote Okay. Harry the platypus, your timing is uncanny, and by uncanny I mean... Completely canny! Nicely done. Well, you can be very much like a cam. As I am. Yes. You know, it just means you're cylindrical. We start with a premise, just a page and a half. We pitch it in the writer's room to see if we laugh. Then we check on the executive's esprit de corps. She says, yeah, we're going to outline. That's just one page more! I had a job on The Simpsons doing backgrounds. And all of a sudden, you know, the skies opened up and vertical shafts of light and choirs of angels sang. And I thought, ah, this is so cool. <laughs> all right, I'll buy that. But it still feels like it's missing something. The song. Okay, how about something like, Zupa Dea, Zupa Dea. Do it again. Zupa Dea. Harry the Platypus. Whoa, what's that? It's Perry the Platypus, I just said that. He's wearing a hat. And he's a platypus? And his name is Perry. It's, it's like I'm not even here. Attention! Top priority message from Alka. Attention! Doofenshmirtz, old-timey guy, other oddly-dressed people. <laughs> old-timey guy. I heard him. We're not resting on our laurels, just eating fun. To avoid confusion, let's, uh, let's just synchronize our calendars right... Now. Mm, hello? Francis! Hi, it's me, Heinz. Have you seen Perry the Platypus? Dr. Doofenshmirtz, that information is highly classified and strictly confidential. You have no idea where he is. Not a clue. We're going to the zoo. We're going to the zoo. There's a three-toed sloth and a green iguana. Who needs a flora? We got all kinds of fauna. What kind of an evil scheme you got going on there today? Well, it isn't so much an evil scheme as much as a childish prank, but I've invented a, a mustachinator! It gives people big, bushy, ridiculous-looking mustaches. Because, as we all know, there's nothing sillier than a big, bushy man. <laughs> all right, uh... If you like to draw or do anything creative, uh, and that's really where your passion is, you can make a living doing it. I, you know, I grew up in... in uh, 
in Alabama, and I heard a lot of adults tell me that, you know, you know, there's a reason they call them starving artists, because they're starving. And, and, you know, I sort of went against that and went ahead and tried to make a career out of it. But I, I think it's important to know that you can actually do this. You can actually uh, do something that you love for a living. And to, to me, that's the best t way you can spend your time is if your job is something that you really enjoy doing. If you want more information like a real insider, just check the local listings on your provider. If this is the only thing I've ever remembered for in my career, I'm really fine with that because it's, it's the thing that clearly I am the most proud of for the opportunity to keep doing this, I genuinely thank them. So that's how we do it. Are there any questions? If there are, keep them to yourself. I didn't think so. Word.